Hey man, church! It's great to be here this morning! Come on, bro! Worship God with you in Cypress Point Park, hey amen! Uh, it's a nice little breezy day, not too hot. Could be hotter, but uh, we're grateful uh, to be able to come out and be able to outdoor and worship God. Uh, and uh, really be able to look at the nature that God gives us. Amen. Okay. You know, uh, it's been a great week. A uh, week of uh, great things, uh, fun activities. Uh, kids are out of school. Campus is out of school. <laughs> Everybody's out having fun, enjoying life. As uh, life is a good thing. Amen. That's right. Amen. And, uh, you know, what, what pleasure is there if you can't be a disciple to live the Christian life if you can't? have a lot of fun amen right on. Uh, you know this morning I want to preach on uh, judges book of judges there and uh, title of my lesson is simply weak vessel but a mighty God a weak vessel but a mighty God amen you know Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12 9 he says and he said to me my grace is sufficient for you my strength is made perfect and weakness amen. amen we are all weak vessels but we have a mighty god no matter what we do no matter what happened no matter what adversity that hits us in our lives that we can all we have a mighty god to be able to fill our needs and give us the strength that we need amen, amen. let's go ahead guys and turn our bibles to judges chapter six come on, come on anthony come on, come on. you know these were def uh, desperate times and difficult days for the people of God. Here we look between 1162 and 1122 BC, where, you know, it was a really challenging time. God allowed the Midianites to overtake Israel, and the people suffered under their bondage into victory. It is often times and difficulty that God will raise up one to lead his people out of bondage and into victory. Gideon, as we know, was an unlikely candidate. But God chose to use him. Many of us, sometimes we feel like we are unlikely candidate to lead a Bible talk, unlikely candidate to preach the word, unlikely candidate to love people the way Jesus loved. But through Jesus, we can do anything. Amen. Amen. You know, we're living in a day much like Gideon's day as we're going to begin to read here shortly. God is looking for those who will stand up for Him in opposition to the weakness of this day. Amen. This requires a strong faith, a sacrifice on our part, but it can be done. Amen. Gideon wouldn't have been chosen by his peers to lead this charge, but they hadn't called. God called. Amen. So let's look at some great examples of this guy Gideon who's much like us how God used this man in a powerful way in Judges chapter 6 starting in verse 11 the Bible says the angel of the Lord came and sat down under an oak and Ophrah and longed to long to Joash the Abbasite where his son Gideon was dressing wheat in the wine press to keep it from the Midianites when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all the wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into hand immediately. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. I am sending you. Let's stop there. Here, Gideon is threshing the wine press. He's out there working in the field. He's trying to save some wheat so that when things are bad, he will be able to help his people. Yeah. And Gideon was not a man like us. He didn't immediately accept what God had asked him to do. He had some flaws in his character that hindered the work of the Lord. 
Maybe there are a few flaws in our character that you can think of that may hinder us. Yeah. But see, God saw beyond Gideon's weakness. Yeah. He saw that he can do something mighty. And we have to see that we can do something mighty and believe it. And it will show through your faith and believing that God, Jesus, raised from the dead. He died, he was buried, and he resurrected, and he gave, he resurrected a new life. So we have a new life as well. Amen, guys? Amen. As we die to ourselves, as we bury to our sins, and that we resurrect from the dead spiritually too. Amen? Amen. God always believes in us. Let's continue to read. Come on. It says, Then the Lord turned to him in verse 14, Go in the strength you have Israel, meet in the hands. I am not sending you. Pardon me, verse 15, my Lord. Gideon replied, But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in the Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Again, here, God, angel tells him, hey, you're called. And he says, listen, pardon me. I'm the weakest. I'm the weakest. How can you choose me? There's no way. Not me. No way. But God says, no. Go in the strength you have. Amen. Guys, Amen. go in, in the strength you have. Right. That concept, going in the strength on, you have. Everyone in here this morning has strength. Yeah. You have enough strength to get here, right? Yeah. On, then you have strength. Yeah. If you have enough yeah. strength to walk here through the power of God, then you have enough strength. Yeah. If you have enough strength to get here through the power of God, you have enough faith to take on the battles of life. Come on, bro. Because if you're a disciple, we have the Spirit of God in us. Amen. 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 God had allowed the Midianites to overtake Israel, and the people suffered under their heavy hand. It is often times that God will raise up a leader. You know, see in verse 13, Gideon was much like us. He did not immediately accept the plan of God. and But, after lots of persuading him, encouraging him as we will continue to read, he finally got a conviction inside. He says, go and the strength you have. Yeah. You know, Friday night, I was going in the strength I had. Hey, come on, we were doing this game called Manhunt. And in Manhunt, basically, you have two teams. You have the hunters and those who are being hunted. And I was one of those hunters. I like being a hunter. And you have to have this burst of energy. That you know, I'm gonna give my all. Amen. You know, and I want to put somebody in jail. So we had a little system, you know, a little cage place that after you catch them, you have to put them in jail. And then someone has to come and free them out. But the only way they can free them out, if whoever's guarding the station is not looking the right direction. And then they come in, they free them out. But here is the thing. I said I'm gonna give my all. And you know. As I caught the opponent, I ran as hard and fast as I could. And they tried to get away from me, but I tagged them. I was so impressed. I was so impressed that at 51 years old, that I could still crank up some speed. But that was kind of cool because 30 seconds later after I did a tag, I caught someone else, hey. and I gave, I I went as fast as I could, and I'm gonna tell you, after that second round, I was like huffing, oh, no. puffing. Uh, two Mormon girls came up, and they said, "Are you okay?" I said, "Yes, I'm okay. I'm playing this game, and uh, it's very challenging." <laughs> and so it was a challenge. They said, well, "I said I'm okay. I'm just trying to catch my breath." But that's all the strength I had. I could not wait 
to go to the campsite and and be someone who guards the tent because at that time I didn't want to run after anyone else. <laughs> I didn't want to run after anyone else. But it was a lot of fun uh, being able to uh, going after my brothers and sisters, uh, really chasing them down, uh, and, and really, uh, you know, there's some spiritual stuff about that guy. You know, that's, on, that's some spiritual evidence about chasing somebody down. You know, you Come got on. the hunter. Who is the hunter? Well, the hunter, in a sense. Uh, devil is always trying to hunt us. But in the spiritual perspective, the hunter is going after people who are in the dark right. and bringing them into light. Amen. Yeah. And that's the spiritual I got. So it was awesome. But just as we see Gideon, who did not have the faith, but through a lot of persuasion, a lot of convincing, and telling them, go in the strength you have, he made a decision that he was going to go. He tells us, Verse 15, he tells us, you know, how can we say? How can we say if I'm the weakest? You know, how can, some of you may ask, how can we save Tampa? You know, we are a small rinky-dink church, you know? And uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of people to be saved. Hey, we're just small. He says, no. God says, no. Then he says, no. Go in the strength you have. Amen. This morning, I want to ask you a question. What kind of strength do you have? Are you going in the strength that God provides you this morning? You know, many times, our lack of trusting in God, strength is the greatest hindrance to fulfilling God's will. We don't need to be prideful and arrogant, just trusting the Lord and His ability to work through our lives. to try to save some wheat so that he could feed his people yeah. and you know he was just out there average person you know doing his job and all of a sudden an angel comes up to him and he says go you have been chosen go and do the work of the Lord Amen. he says listen you know how can I I'm weak see when the Bible says when we are weak we are strong Amen. are you feeling strong this morning yeah are you feeling strong in the Lord? You know, we've got to be active. We've got to be active. Typically in the day of wheat was threshed on the threshing floor, a place set aside near the field of the harvest, using oxen uh, to tread out the grain. It is noble that Gideon is even working in the harvest at that time, at all. But he has to overcome, be overcome with fear. He isn't using all that is available to ensure the harvest, but he has brought a small portion of this wheat in the wine press and is working secret, hidden from the Midianites. In our church, we've begun to thrive in the harvest, just as we've begun saving souls. Why? Because we want to see spiritual victories. Yeah. We want to see the church grow. Yeah. We want to see lives change. Amen. We want to see men and women. We want to see, thank you. We want to see men and women flourish. Yeah. And we know the only way that we can flourish if we get filled up ourselves. That's Not true. only through the Word of God, but through participating and winning souls. Amen. As we look at the people around us and we see that they are dying, we see that they are com they're really uh, com thinking about and contemplating suicide and all the different things that goes through the minds of people. We can look out and be a beacon of light to them. Well, Why? Because God has given us a spirit that's morally shared, not of timidity, but of power and of self-discipline. And I really believe God is calling Gideon as he's calling you and I to this self-discipline, the discipline to go after this lost world. Amen. As Gideon had a heart for this lost world, yeah. but he was filled with fear. Amen. Yeah. Come on. It's true. Are you filled with fear this morning? Or are you filled with hope? Are you filled with hope? Come on. You know, a few have settled. A few have settled in the harvest.
that there is no harvest. Sometimes we can settle that there is no harvest because sometimes we miss the grace of God. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. As long as the world isn't aware that what we're doing, then we don't have to take a stand for the lost. That's sometimes what we read in our minds, what happens in our mind. That can be the mindset if we lose focus on loving God yeah. and loving people. We can easily become complacent with the little work done. We can easily become complacent in our own agendas and miss the mark, miss what God is calling us to do. He told Gideon, go and the strength you have. Yeah. It doesn't say, go and the strength of your own power. Oh, come on. Come doesn't on. say, go and the strength of the acti act your personal activities. Right. doesn't say, go and the strength of your personal agenda. Mm. It says, go and the strength you have to fulfill the plan that God has laid out for you. Look at his attitude in verse 13. He says, listen. He says, pardon me. Pardon me. But if the Lord is with us, why has this happened? Why has this happened? How do you guys think this year, hey, if the Lord is with me, why has this happened? It happened because God wants you to rely on Him. Right. It happened because God wants you to see His face. And without these adversity and challenges going on in your life, you can't sometimes see His face because you think that everything is okay. That I don't need God. God is working in my life, so I don't need to have my quiet times in the morning. I don't need to be consistent. I can have three out of four quiet times in a week. No, 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 no. That's not enough to maintain the strength that God gave you Come from on. the beginning. Yeah. It only diminishes and you get weaker and weaker the wrong way. We're going to be weak. Let's be weak through humility. We can understanding that we don't deserve what God has put in our path. Come on, preach it. We can understand that we don't deserve the relationships that God has put in our path. Come on, bro. We don't deserve to have this amazing, awesome Bible that we have. Come on. We don't to have, deserve to have discipling partners, people who mentor us, who teach us, who train us. See, when we're weak, we understand that we don't deserve to have the hope that God has given us. Yeah, come on. Hearing the call of God, began, beginning and begins to question whether he's worthy to the task. He complains about the situation of Israel's facing. He seems resigned to the fact that suffering that they've had would never improve. This must be the will of our lives. That was the heart. But see, sometimes as disciples, that is the heart we have sometimes. You know, I'm resolved that that's just the way it is. You ever heard, oh, that's just so-and-so. Oh, that's just the way it goes. Oh, that's just the way Anthony is. Oh, that's the way Chris is. Oh, that's just the way, it, you know, you go through these scenarios, but you don't have faith. Well, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with my job. I'm satisfied with minimum wage. I don't want to really go beyond and hit the 50, 60,000, 70,000 a year. You know, that's just the way it is. You know, no matter how many degrees I have, oh, I'm just satisfied with that because you know what? The church in itself, they will figure it out. You know, I don't need to make more money to help build up God's kingdom so that we can get into a building and not have to stay into the park. No, I don't have to worry about that. No, you know, giving 10, 15 bucks a day, that, that's just a, a, a week. That's just fine, you know? when you have the ability to do hundreds for the Lord Come on. to build this kingdom. Come on, bro. See, that's the attitude that people have when God calls you. He calls you for Come His on. great purpose. When He calls you, do you really respond? Mm -hmm. 
Do you run away? Are you fearful? You're fearful because the only one who's going to help me is me. The only one that's going to help me is me. So when someone gets in your life, as the angel got in Gideon's life, and challenges him, encourages him, he bucks, he runs. He's full of fear. But sometimes, the heart needs to be massaged. Come on. Sometimes for people it takes weeks, months, and even years before they really get it. Thank God that Gideon got it that same day. He got it. Guys, can you imagine the test that was before him? Can you imagine? Wow. Save Israel. What an amazing task before God. And we have a hard time just getting the church on time sometimes. Mm, come on, bro. Being early at church. You know what I'm guys? Yeah. yeah. You know, being sacrificial. Just yeah. serving. Giving sometimes. You know, you get you get to start complaining about the heat. You get focused. You lose your smile. You lose your zeal. But see, you're getting him. You know, he went for it. Is this your attitude? The attitude of giving up is not the attitude of a disciple. Come on, bro. You don't give up. You stand for God's honor. You know, Will Davenport at one point this was struggling to know what he wanted in life. You know, he's a great musician with great talents. But apparently, he says, no, I figured out another talent, and that was cooking. Come on. He says, I've got to do something radical, something that I enjoy, something that I love. And he decided he was going to be a cook, a chef. So he goes in and he takes this course, a couple years course there online, and just recently, he finally got his degree of certificate. But I want to tell you, it was hard for him. It was hard for him because things just were not clear. Things were a little cluttered. And God put it upon his heart and said, hey, I'm going to go after this. Because I want to be able to give, to be able to be a great support to the kingdom of God. Amen. to get this or that, to achieve this or that, that it is not on your own talents, it is not on your own abilities, it is ultimately the grace and mercy of God. Amen. We must have a deep conviction that God is sovereign and He can do all things Amen. to those who love Him. Amen. Who love Him. <laughs> you know, going in the straight, going in the strength. By the way, guys, uh, my point number one, if you didn't get it, was simply my point number one. There we go. What's simply go in the strength with confidence. Amen. Go in the strength with confidence. Amen? You've got to have great confidence. So are you having great confidence? See, Gideon went in the strength. He went and he made it happen. Point number two. God knows what you and I are capable of. God knows what you and I are capable of. Amen. Gideon looked at himself from a human perspective. He was resting solely upon his own ability, like many of us at times. Gideon didn't even know what he was capable of. Preach it. God knew everything about Gideon, yeah. which he did not understand for himself. Some of you don't know, don't know what you're capable of. There isn't a disciple here today who does not have a great potential through the Lord to do even greater things. That's right. And you've got to believe this. Yeah. You've got to embrace this thought 
yeah. and then you got to apply it and go after it. Amen. Are you going after it, guys? This is a new beginning. This is the Melican. This is our Chinese New Year. Amen, guys? Amen. It's time to start all over. Amen. Amen. Have you embraced that thought? You know, we have young disciples who desire to be Bible talk leaders. Amen. We have young disciples who desire to be trained in song leading. You know, to help Will out. That's awesome. But it only is going to happen if they continue to believe and if you continue to breathe faith in them, Amen. that they can do the job. Come yeah. on. And that we're not self-seeking for our own status, Come on. but for the best of the interests of others. Amen. Yeah. Come on. That's what it's about, guys. Amen. He wouldn't have called us if he wasn't able to equip us. Yeah. There are three potentials that Gideon has. Number one, undiscovered courage. As we see in verse 12, he says, when the angel of the Lord appeared to him, he said, the Lord is with you. God has undiscovered courage for you that we do not have. And within yourself needs to understand that you have undisco undiscovered courage. Come on. And the only way to understand that you are that's true, that God has your best interest, is you gotta believe it when he calls you. All that Gideon could see was his heart filled with fear. God saw a mighty warning. Come on. Guys, think about that. He's on the he's threshing wheat. He saw a mighty warrior. Are you any different than Gideon? Really? Are you truly any different than Gideon? Right. Have you just settled? Come on. Settled for mediocrity. <laughs> Not striving to be your best. Settled that you're gonna spend your time doing Xbox. You're gonna spend your time on social media. You're going to spend your time surfing the internet with no purpose. No desire. See, getting it needed someone to believe it. Come on, preach it. You can't make things happen if you don't get up and go. Amen. You got to get up and go. Amen. Come on. Don't go when a leader comes around. It's when the leader is not around is when you go. Come on. Who you and I are in our household is who we really are. That's right. true. And I had to learn a lot of lessons at home. My character comes out at home sometimes. And I have a wonderful family that points it out. Yeah. And it's, you know, when your family points out things in your life, and you're supposed to be the spiritual leader, you know you got to repent instantly. You gotta repent on the spot. Yep, amen. On the spot. I'm always convicted. I'm so grateful for my wife and my two sons. Amen. That sits there and they tell me the truth. Super convicted. And so they're always, you know, in my household, you have to grow. There's not an inkling where you cannot grow. Because we hold each other accountable in our household. Amen. You know, it's interesting. I talk to brothers sometimes. And uh, every now and then you hear those stories where brothers aren't being held accountable in their sin. And sometimes we want to take the back door in dealing with sin in our li in lives of people instead of taking the front door and getting directly to the heart. We've got to be men and women who get to the heart. And we got to go in the strength that God provides. See, God knows what you and I are capable of. You're capable of helping someone change. You're capable of helping someone be different in their life and their character. You're capable, through the power of God, to sit down 
and study the Bible with someone and share your testimony, which inspires their life. You're capable. You're capable of anything that you cannot achieve. I'm, I'm 20 pounds overweight. 20 pounds overweight. At least five days ago. Five days ago, I was 20 pounds overweight. But now, I'm 10 pounds overweight. And if I can go another five days through the strength that God gives me, through juicing, then I would have achieved my goal. I would have achieved my goal. It's not easy to not eat the luxuries of sub sandwiches, Come on. of steak, of chocolate, and all those things. I can't eat anyway because I'm a diabetic. <laughs> but here is the deal. My goal is to get off all my medications. Yeah, get off my lip, Woo! get off my uh, it, metformin, get off my Lipitor, get off my high blood pressure medicine, and maybe and get off my water pill. I want to get off all those medications. Hey. That is my goal. Come on, now. And it's only God who's going to help me through that. Yep. Amen. The question is, what about you? Is there anything in your life that you believe that God can't do for you? God can do it. We can do everything through Him who gives us strength. Philippians 4.13, right? But you've got to believe it. You've got to embrace it. Amen. Amen. The second thing that potential that Gideon has, undeniable talents. Undeniable talents as we look at 14. He turned to the Lord and said, Go in your strength you have, save Israel. I am sending you. God knew that he had undeniable talents. Yeah. He sees that Michael has undeniable talents. Right. But it's up to Michael how he wants to use it for the Lord. Right. Yeah, come on. It's up to Michael. God sees that Jeff has undeniable talents. That's right. We're just trying to pull that stuff out of him. Because yeah. God knows something's there. Come on. He's trying to pull it out. That's right. God knows that Christiana Woo. has undeniable talents. Yeah. She's an amazing campus student. Yep. Right. But sometimes she's fearful. But God says, no, Christiana, you go in the strength you have. Amen. On, and you've got to believe it. Yep. You have the charge, along with great, awesome other sisters, Amen. to take that daytime campus ministry and flat out spur it on and crank it right on up. Come on. But you got to believe it. Amen. Amen. Come on. Gideon may not have fully understood, but he was not asked to stand against the Midianites on his own ability. Yeah. Right. He was asked to stand against the Midianites with the power and strength that God provides. Amen. Amen. The Lord will never send you out to devour you or to be devoured by our enemies. But He uses the adversity in our lives to produce character. To produce patience. To produce conviction. But see, sometimes when the adversity comes, we don't want the conviction. Yeah. We don't want the patience. We don't want the character change. Because we have decided that I'm comfortable just where I am. See, guys, I think we can get comfortable sometimes. We can get complacent. You have, you and I have undeniable talents. We've got to start to use it and go in the strength that God gives us. Amen. Because God knows what you and I are capable of. Amen. Yeah. Come on, Anthony. Sometimes it may look as if the enemy will soon overtake us, but God is always in control. Amen. Do you really believe that? Do you believe that God's in control? If you really believe that God is in control, then whatever comes your way, that is of God and of God's leadership, and of the person who's mentoring you, then you're going to take the charge and you're going to embrace it. 
you're not only going to embrace it, you're going to trust it, and you're going to obey it. Because that's what Gideon did. See, Gideon never, he never said, hey, I don't want to do it. He questioned God. And even after he questioned God, and God gave him a sign, after he put out a fleece, he put a fleece out and said, hey, if this is you, truly you with me, God, then make this flea have no dew on it. And God did exactly. Or if it, uh, not do have do on it. And then you show. Then you prove yourself. That wasn't enough. He still wanted yeah. proof that it was God. After he'd done the first miracle, it still was not enough. And I, to believe. Amen. Come on, Anthony. Seeing Marciella and Michaela become a disciple. Marciella. Marciella. Is that enough fruit for you? Yeah. <laughs> Seeing Miguel become a disciple. Is that enough proof for you? Come on. Seeing Michael become a disciple. Is that enough proof for you? Yeah. Seeing your life change. And God reaching out to you to become a disciple. Is that enough proof for you? Yeah. Undeniable talents. Psalm 73, 26 says, you don't need to turn there. My flesh and my heart fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God's will shall never lead you where His grace cannot keep you. When we realize that we're not standing on our own ability, but in the Lord's will, we're well on our way to having incredible victories. Third one. Third opportunity that Gideon has. A man with unlimited resources. Verse 16. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Can he reply, If now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that is really you talking to me. Please do not go until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. That's pretty cool, right? You ask the Lord to wait for you. And he says there, he says, okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. God is patient, isn't he? Oh, he's really patient with Gideon. Gideon went inside and bear a goat from the infant and the flour, made the bread without yeast. Putting the meat in the basket and his broth in a pot, he brought out the offering and offered them to him under the oak. The angel said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread, place it on the rock, and pour it, on, pour it out on the broth. And Gideon did so. The angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread with the tip of the staff, and it was in his hand. Fire flared up from the rock. Consuming the meat and the bread. Wow, that's pretty cool, right? You put a staff in the fire, the, the, you know, that, that, that meat there just turns up fire. Whoop, you know, like that's pretty cool, right? Another miracle, power of God. Pretty awesome. But Gideon doesn't stop there. He continues. He continues to go after the honor of God. He continues to want to see signs. After you've seen the miracles of God, do you still ask God to see a sign in your life? He had unlimited resources. Who was his resource? His resource was God. <laughs> and that's all the resources he needed, right? You know, we have resources in the church. You know, I couldn't do what I do without you. Without us collectively working together, right? But there's a combination of God being a resource and you being a re us being a resource to each other. And all the talents and gifts that we put on the table, we forgot. 
He had unlimited resources that he did not even understand. God saw beyond what he saw in himself. In 2 Chronicles, uh, Chronicles, uh, 2 Chronicles, Chronicles, goodness gracious, <laughs> Chronicles, I'm thinking about that movie. Anyway, chapter 7, verse 14, the Bible says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God just wants us, guys, to humble ourselves before the Lord, to seek His face, to turn from our wicked ways. And He says He will forgive our sins. Now, we understand. You want to be forgiven, you got to repent of your sins. you got to be baptized. And then, you need to be added to God's kingdom. Amen? That is the way to do it. It ain't going to just happen from heaven. Just because you look good. Just because you're a good person. Just because you and I say the right thing. There is deep waters in all of us that we need to see deeply. And we need to flat repent. And get baptized for the forgiveness of our sins. And then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 41 verse 10. The Bible says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. See, are you encouraged by that? Is that far are you right on up? God knows what you and I are capable of. Gideon, you know the story. He goes out and he takes on the Midianites. 32,000 men. God dwindled, dwindled that army down to 300 because he did not want Gideon to rely on his own strength but on the power of God as this speaks about in chapter 7. He listens to God. He finally gets strengthened. And he sees after the miracles that God has performed, this is the God Almighty that we serve. And he will lead us to victory. He will lead us to victory. And we are able to deal with all of our enemies. He will give us justice. See, he realized that he went in the strength that God provided. He realized that he did have the strength. We've got to realize this morning that God will give you the strength if you desire walking around aimlessly, not achieving anything, doubting the plan of God. You've got to rely on the strength that God has given us. Because it's only through Him that we can live. It's only through Him who gives us confidence. It's only through Him that will give us the peace that we desire. That inner peace only comes through a relationship with God. If you're visiting for the first time, I want to encourage you to get with the person who invited you. Find out about this great, incredible peace that we can have. Find out about the strength that God gives us. Find out how He can that the undeniable talents that God has given you, that you can truly be used by God. And if you are used by God, we can turn this world upside down. Go in the strength with confidence, brothers and sisters. God knows what you and I are capable of. And when you know what you're capable of, go in the strength that God provides for you. To God be the glory. Woo!